I see young men my town span whose misfortune it is to have inherited farms, houses, barns, cattle, and farming tools. For these are more easily acquired than got rid of. Better if they had been born in the open pastures and suckled by a wolf, that they might have seen with clearer eyes what field they were called to labor in. Who made them serfs of the soil? Why should they eat their sixty acres when man is condemned to eat only his peck of dirt? Why should they begin digging their graves as soon as they are born? They have got to live a man's life, pushing all these things before them, and get on as well as they can. How many a poor immortal soul have met have I met well nice or well nigh crushed and smothered under its load, creeping down the road of life, pushing before it burns seventy five feet by forty, its old jeans, stables never cleansed, and one hundred acres of land, tillage, mowing, pasture, and woodlot. The portionless who struggle with no such unnecessary inherited encumbrances find it labor enough to subdue and cultivate a few cubic feet of flesh. But men labor under a mistake. The better part of the man is soon flowed into the soil for compost. By a se seeming fate, commonly called necessity, they are employed, as he says, in an old book, laying up treasures which moth and rust will corrupt and thieves spread to and steal. It is a fool's life as they will find when they get to the end of it. If not before, it is said that Deu Kaliun and Piraha created men by throwing stones over their heads behind them. In the genus Durum sumus experience qui labo, laborum et doc, documenta damus qua simus origina nati, or as la lei written in a sonorous way, from thence our kind hard hearted is enduring pain and care approving that our bodies of a stormy, stony nature are. So much for a blind obedience to a bundling oracle, throwing the stones over their heads behind them and not seeing where they fell. Most men, even in this comparatively free country, through mere ignorance and mistake, are so occupied with the factious cares and superfluously Coarse labors of life that is, its finer fruits cannot be flocked by them. Their fingers from excessive toil are too clumsy and tremble too much for that. Actually, the laboring man has not leisure for a true integrity day by day. He cannot afford to sustain the man least relations, relations to man. His labor would be depreciated in the market. He has no time to be anything but a machine. How can he remember well his ignorance, which he his growth requires? Who has so often to use his knowledge? We should feed and clothe him gratuitously sometimes and recruit him with our colders before we judge of him. The finest qualities of our nature, like the bloom on fruits, can be preserved only by the most delicate handling. Yet we do not treat ourselves nor one another thus tenderly. Some of you we all know are poor, find it hard to live, are sometimes as it were grasping for breath. I have no doubt that some of you who read, read this book are unable to pay for all the dinners which you have actually eaten, or for the coats or sho and shoes which are fast wearing are or are already worn out and have come to this page to spend borrowed or stolen time. 
robbing your creditors of an hour. It is very evident what mean and sneaking lives many of you live, for my sight has been wrecked by experience. Always on the limit, trying to get into business and trying to get out of that. A very Asian slow, called by the Latin as Eli Nim. Another's breast, for some of their coins were made of breast. Still living and dying, and buried by this other's breast, always promising to pay, promising to pay tomorrow, and dying today, insolvent, seeking to curry favor, to guess custom by how many moves, only not state prison offenses, lying, flattering, boarding, contracting yourself into a nostril of a credibility or delating into an atmosphere of thin and vaporous generosity that you may persuade your neighbor to let you make his shoes or his hat or his coat or his carriage or import his groceries for him, making yourself sick that you may lay off something against a sick day, something to be tucked away in an old chest or in a stocking behind the plastering or more safely in the brick bank, no matter where, no matter how much or how little. I sometimes wonder that we can be so frivolous. I may almost say is to attend to gross but somewhat foreign from form of servitude called the Negro slavery. There are so many keen and subtle masters that enslave both North and South. It is hard to have a southern overseer, it is worse to have a northern one. But worst of all, when you are the slave deriver of, of yourself, talk of divinity in man, look at the teamster on the highway, wending to market by day or night, the, night does any divinity, divinity stir within him, his highest duty to far father and water his horses. What is his destiny to him compared with the shipping interests? Does not he drive for a skier, make a stir? How godlike, how immortal is he? See how he cowers and sneaks, how vaguely all the day he fears not being immortal nor divine. But the slave and prisoner of his own opinion of himself, a fame one by his own deeds. Public opinion is a weak tyrant compared with our own private opinion. What a man think of himself, that it is which determines or rather indicates his fate. Self-emancipation even in the West Indian provinces of the fancy and imagination, what river force is there to bring that about? Think also of the ladies of the land weaving toilet cushions against the last day not to betray to green in an uninterest in their fate, as if you could kill time without injuring eternity. eternity. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. From the desperate city you go into a desperate country and have to console yourself with the bravery of minks and muskrats. A stereotype but unconscious, unconscious despair is concealed even under what are called the games and amusements of kind. There is no play in them, for this comes after work. But it is a characteristic of wisdom not to do desperate things. When we consider what, to use the word of the cake chism, is the chip and the man, and what are the true necessities and means of life, it appears as if men had deliberately chosen the common mode of living because they prefer to prefer it to any other. Yet they honestly think there is no choice left. But alert and healthy nature, remember that the sun rose clear. It is never too late to give up our prejudices. No way of thinking or doing, however Asian, can be trusted without proof. 
but everybody echoes it or in silence passes by as truth today may turn out to be falsehood tomorrow, mere smoke of opinion, which some had trusted for a cloud that would sprinkle fertilizing rain on their fields. What old people say you cannot do, you cannot do, do you try and find that you can? Old deeds for old people and new deeds for you. Old people did not know enough once, per chance to fetch fresh fuel to keep the fire going. You people put a little dry wood under a pot and are heard around the globe with the speed of birds in a way to kill old people. As the phrase is, age is no better, hardly so well qualified for an instructor as youth, for it has not profited profited so much as it, lost, it, it has lost. One may almost doubt if the wisest man has learned anything of absolute value by living. Practically, the, the old have no very important advice to give the young. Their own experience has been so partial, and their lives has, have been such miserable failures for private reasons as they must believe and it may be that they have some face left which well belies that experience and they are only less young than they were. I have lived some 30 years on this planet and I have yet to hear the first syllable of valuable or even earnest advice from my seniors. They have told me nothing and probably cannot tell me anything to the purpose. Here is life, an experiment to a great extent untried by me, but it does not avail me that they have tried it. If I have an experience which I think valuable, I am sure to reflect that this is my mentors said nothing about.